Greetings my friends, this is Denise McGill again and I am going to help you make a photo composite of your child's inner fairy. The first thing you want to do is to create your artboard and in this particular instance I chose 11 by 11 inches and 300 dots per inch. I, I usually pick 20 by 20. I like the square format, but it's anything that you want to choose, literally. Then you're going to import the photo of your child, and we already cut out the background from the child and saved it, and here she is. Now this is very rough. I just went around it with a, a quick selection tool and now it needs to be cleaned up around the edges because she was laying on a very dry grassy ground when I took her photo. And the quick selection tool is great but not perfect. As you can see, it left little fringy areas. Now I'm going to use the brush tool. I'm going to make it kind of uh, oh, 40, 60 in the softness. And I'm just going to go around it, cleaning up the fringy areas of background that are still showing. Now it, there are other ways that you could do this, but I find that this is best for me. I feel like I have more control somehow <laughs> to clean it up myself with my brush tool. You can see I added a mask <clears throat> and on the mask is very non-destructive. You want to use a mask because if you use the eraser tool you could not get back what you have taken off. With a mask everything is still there it's just masked out to mask you use your brush and the black as you can see at the bottom of that toolbar we have the black selected and if you want to bring something back that you have erased with the mask you change the black to white that simple so I'm going to go around her hair. I'm going to get rid of some of the extra fringy areas because they won't really show in, in the uh, final product of this little fairy anyway. And as you can see, my photo had some little anomalies. So I'm going to take the healing tool and heal the little white dots. You can see I created an extra layer that I am going to relabel as healing or clone. I don't remember what I did, but you should always label your layers so that you know what is what if you want to change it later. And you can see I can, I'm just healing little spots on her face that don't seem to be quite perfect. Photos often do that. They'll have, I don't know, little uh, artifacts and um, anomalies, little white dots. Now I'm clicking back onto my mask and I'm going to go back around and finish cleaning up all of her, her little edges, her fringy edges. As you take a, lay of a photo of your child, you should try and get the whole body of your child in the photo. You don't have to have them looking at you to make a very sweet little fairy. You don't have to have them jumping or floating either. Um, in this particular case, she was just laying on the ground and pushing up. And it works just fine for this little mushroom fairy. Here's where the stubby grass is showing on her legs. 
So I trimmed her legs a little bit more than she actually was trim. But um, I did want to get some of that stubby grass not to show as much on, on the, around the knees and the calves. And there's a little spot on her face that I'm going to go back to my clone layer and fix up. I'm going to go to my clone tool, choose a section of her face that isn't um, messed up, and then just paint over it. The clone tool is very handy for that kind of thing. Okay, I've looked it over. She looks pretty good. Now I can zoom out and prepare to find the butterfly wings. Sometimes it's a good idea to keep all of your different elements in one file so you don't have to search for them. In my case, I have a whole file of butterfly wings and I just look through them to see what what I like, what strikes my fancy. This photo I got from Pixabay. It's a PNG so it has no background and it's very easy to just adjust, add a layer mask so that you can then mask out the head and the 